Hello, everybody. Uh, again, sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. Um, my name is Dave Aquino. I am the Stocks and Options Live Trading Room Specialist at ValueCharts.com. And um, uh, my part of the uh, trading series today focuses on my Big Fish trading strategy. Now, uh, this is a strategy we actively use in my trading room, and uh, I'm very happy to bring you this opportunity. And I just want to tell, uh, just say thank you to Metastock for offering this event that we can share high quality information uh, with traders because you, you know as well as I do that the markets can be crazy, it can be rocky. But if you have solid trading strategies on a solid trading platform, you have a very good opportunity to make money in the volatility. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. Um, okay, want to make sure my screen is catching up here. Okay. All right, everyone. My, again, my name is Dave Aquino. Just a little bit about me. Uh, I graduated in 1995 from Vanderbilt University, uh, and then I quickly joined Merrill Lynch at the ripe old age of 23. Um, I was there for about uh, six years, and then after that, I joined uh, the Vanguard Group's Asset Management Service. Uh, my job there was actually work in the Ultra High Net Worth Group and we created option strategies to generate cash flow in some highly appreciated stock portfolios. So I've been working with options nearly my entire career. And then about four years ago, I had the opportunity to join Value Charts. And ever since, I've been trading and teaching stocks and options strategies for almost four years. So again, this is one of the strategies we use. So I'm, I'm very happy to bring it to you. I'm not going to read you the risk disclaimer verbatim. The most important thing that I want you to walk away from from this chart is make sure you don't trade with any money you cannot afford to lose. We can't guarantee success, but from past performance results, we know that these strategies give you a high probability of success. But past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, this is CFTC Rule 4.41 not going to read that one to you verbatim either. Just realize that, uh, again, trading carries both large potential rewards and risks. Okay? All right. This is a bit of wisdom I really like to share with my traders. Um, I do a lot of mentorships in uh, with people in my trading room. And the most important aspect that successful traders understand is that when you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. That is the kind of focus we have when we tra train our traders. Because it's great if I can give you a suggestion on a trade, maybe give you a hot tip and you make a little bit of money. But if you sit down and you learn a process, a way of trading, you can be successful uh, in, in any trading environment. Okay. I, this is one of my favorite pictures. I have this actually uh, on my wall, and um, I, I'm amazed at the size of this fish. And this comes from a TV show on National Geographic called Wicked Tuna. And um, you know, most fishermen in the world are subsistence fishermen. They go out, they make a catch, they they bring in enough for their family and maybe some of their relatives. But when you go out and you can make a major catch, something like this, this is a bluefin tuna, and these types of fish, each one can bring in 5,000, 8,000, 10,000, sometimes 12,000 per fish. And it's the essence of this picture that reminds me there are opportunities out there in the markets every day with a potential as, as big as this fish, okay? So it, it's kind of, I mean, you just compare it to the size of the fisherman there, and it's amazing. All right, so what I'm going to talk to you about is my aptly named Big Fish Trading System. Now, I'm going to describe to you what Big Fish Trades are. What are the opportunities I'm talking about? What are the strategies? What is the technique that I use to trade and take advantage of big fish moves. 
Okay, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a, a unique trade that I call the shark bite trade. It's kind of an evolution in my big fish trading strategy that allows you to take a really big bite of profits right at the beginning of a big fish opportunity. And then I'll show you some examples of how we've used this in the past and then I'll talk about where the opportunity lies currently in the markets. Okay, so I, I suggest you stay around all the way to the end because that's always a popular thing. Everybody who wants to know where's the next big opportunity, you know, where's the, the next big fish hiding. Okay, and uh, can I just uh, do a one really quick double check on the sound, make sure I'm coming through okay? No one's saying anything, so I, I said, okay, I just wanted to make sure when we reconnect that everything was okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, so the big fish trading method. What do I mean by big fish? Okay, I'm going to talk about building wealth through large profitable trades. These are the trades you sit around with other traders and you, you tell stories, uh, but hopefully not fish stories. We want to talk about big fish stories, the opportunities that you saw coming and that you were able to take advantage of it. Now you want to identify the place where you're searching for these big fish trades. You want to identify where a big move may happen right from the beginning. Then you're going to talk about how, how do I manage that position with little risk. If you've ever seen the sport fishing shows on TV, you, you know sometimes they get a sailfish or a, a, a marlin on the line there and they're trying to fight this fish a whole time, like hours at a time, and they finally land the fish and, and it's a feeling of accomplishment. It's the same thing with a big trade. Um, if you've ever had a really big profit in a position and you can see that the, the opportunity is, my goodness, it's not even all the way there yet and you have this massive profit. How do you manage that? What do you do? And then how do you maximize that so you can really land the entire opportunity? Okay, so that's what I'm going to be talking about today. What do you mean by, what do I mean by big fish? Okay. Um, a big fish trade is a winning trade of sizable, uh, of sufficient profits that can make a sizable impact in your trading account. Now, most professional traders realize, you know, you don't commit your whole or a, or even a big portion of your um, trading portfolio to one trade. Okay, but if you can, whatever you commit to your trade, whether it be 3%, 5%, some of you 10%, um, whatever you commit to the trade, we're looking for a 100% return, what we call a double or, or more. Okay. The other factor is we want a quick return on our profits. All right. It's impressive enough if you could buy a stock and over the course of a year, see that stock double. It's, it's very impressive. But we as traders don't want to be exposed that long. We want to take a risk, we want our money back, and we want to return on our risk. So we want a quick return of profits. When I talk about a big fish trade, I'm looking out two to four days. Okay. Now the question is, Usually you say risk and reward are balanced. Well, we won't, don't want to do that in this trade. We want to risk relatively little of our trading capital, okay? But we want to be able to take advantage of the big move. There, what we're looking for, if we commit, say, 2 to 5% of our portfolio to one trade, the big fish trade, we want to see our portfolio increase 2 to 5%, okay? Now, when you're talking about building your trading account, long-term trading success depends on a steady increase in your trading account. Now, you don't want a trading account whose P&L looks like this, okay? It, it's too much of a heart stopper, you know? It's too much stress. What you want is consistent, steady growth higher right? That's what we want. Well, wouldn't it be nice if your, if your steady growth in your account could be steady big fish trade, steady big fish trade, steady big fish trade, etc. Okay? That's what you want. 
because these big fish trades inject a big boost of return that allows compounding of your account to be even faster. Okay, when you have these big winners, they make a, a huge impact. Okay, you slow and steady wins the race, but if you can get these nice jumps every so often, it's very effective at growing your account. All right, there's a couple quick question. How many big fish opportunities do you get in a year on average? That's a very good question. And during the active seasons of trading, say uh, this period right now, very first part of the year, basically through May, you may see four, five, six opportunities. Uh, in the latter part of the year, basically from Memorial Day through November going into December, um, you, you may have the same amount. Summertime tends to be a little bit less, but again, it depends on the conditions in the market. Um, if the market is unsettled, then there's a potential for a big move. The one aspect, I've been teaching big fish for a while, but there's one aspect for you to understand. When most traders are afraid, okay, or most of traders, most traders are being greedy, okay, and the markets are moving vol, you know, with large amount of volatility. Honestly, that is the best time to be looking for big fish trades, okay. And then the past couple of months have been very good examples of it. All right, so let's talk about how do we identify that opportunity. How do we see the big move right from the start, okay? It's great if you sit down, you look at the account, and you're like, wow, the market has moved 10% in the past two weeks. That's great to, for you to notice now, but it would have been more useful to notice it two weeks ago that the opportunity was setting up. Let's talk about that, the big move right from the start. Before I talk about a big move, I want to talk about a big fish. A big fish is actually a security, a stock or an index or an ETF that has a large dollar value. Okay, We want these large dollar value stocks to have large average true ranges in terms of dollar amount. Now, again, I trade in an options trading room. We also trade stocks and ETFs, but the most leverage we can get are utilizing options. Now when we do that, we utilize a dollar base move can bring us more return than say a percentage base move. Okay? Just keep that in the back of your mind. We want these stocks to make strong directional moves. Up or down doesn't matter. Okay? The reason why we use large dollar value stocks in, in options is that they tend to have highly liquid uh, a number of options, both bullish and bearish. That allows us to utilize leverage to a great extent. Examples of these big fish stocks are Priceline, uh, Netflix, Google, CMG, Amazon, Tesla. Okay. Also, we can utilize ETFs, that QQQ, SPY, IWM. Now, you can also use um, NDX, SPX, and RUT, okay, if you like to trade indices. I like to be able to, to let my traders decide, do they want the ETFs or do they want the index futures, okay? So those really uh, are the, that's the universe. There are not really an enormous amount of big fish stocks. Because if you go out and you try to trade a big fish strategy on a um, $20 stock and it moves 10%, well, that's a, a $2 move. Whereas you do a 10% move in uh, something like Priceline, a 10% move is $100. Okay, $100 on a Delta 70 option is a $7,000. Okay. Whereas on a on a ten dollar a two dollar move is one hundred and forty. Okay. So there's a very big difference. All right. So we have Priceline, Google, CMG, Tesla, Amazon. Right there. What about gold stocks? Gold stocks also. Uh, again, I would put the number. Somebody asked me this the last time. 
anything over, say, $200, um, provided you have a, a decent average true range, um, that's okay. That's a daily uh, average true range, by the way. Okay? It has to move. Um, Apple used to be one of my primary go-to big fish stocks. At $700, you could easily catch a $7, $8, $10 dollar move within a day. The problem is now that, to, that, that, that move turns out to be a dollar to a dollar and a half. Well, you can't make as much money in a dollar and a half move. Even though it's the same percentage, you still can't you can't make as much money. You need big fish, big dollar moves. Okay? That's the essence of a big fish move. Now, how do we find these big moves? Most traders use one time frame. What's your favorite time frame? Usually it's daily, right? Most people look at daily, hey, I'm going to trade, you know, but the fact is sometimes you can't see everything you need to see just by trading the daily. You, can, you need to use multiple time frames to identify different trading opportunities. You can use a longer term time frame on one hand, the daily or the weekly, and that helps us to identify turns or breakouts. If you use the daily SPX in the past week, it's been in a consolidation sideways channel, and guess what it did Friday? It broke out to the upside. Okay. Those are what we call big fish breakout levels. Now, how did you know it was breaking out on the daily? Well, we were watching it around noon on the five minute as well as the 60 minute chart. Okay? But the five minute really gave us an indication that it was breaking out to the upside. That was an entry trade. Okay? I currently have SPX calls I, uh, that I'm holding on to for this specific reason. And I'll sh I will give you an example of that, uh, how I've used it before. Can you use implied volatility instead of average true range? Implied volatility tells you that it's likely to move, but the average true range won't tell you how far it's going to move. I know what you mean. Um, you can to a general extent, but um, I think both are going, to, I, would I would lean towards the average true range, but I would also let you look at it. If you're comparing one stock's numbers and another stock's numbers, they're going to be very similarly, similar, meaning like a price line, average true range and implied volatility move is going to be large and something like a $20 stock like, um, um, goodness, I'm drawing a blank, <laughs> like say a, a Goldman Sachs or a Dell Electric or something that's less than $100, well, it's average true range and it's implied volatility move is going to be much smaller. Big fish are big fish, no matter how you measure them. Okay. Now again, when I'm talking again about entry trades, you want to use the smaller time frame to help you time your entry. Okay. You want to look for a trade that's in the same direction as the longer time frame opportunity. Okay. Let's just say in that sideways channel on the daily and SPX, it's breaking out to the upside. Well, I'm looking at the five or ten or fifteen minute chart for an opportunity to get into a bullish trade. Okay? This is like right now. There's a bullish opportunity on the daily. I'm looking for a bullish trade on the five minutes. I'm looking for a wedge that's going to break out higher. Maybe there's a sideways breakout on the 15 minute that will allow me to buy some calls. When I do that, I'm going to hold those calls and let it go higher. That's exactly how I um, got into the trade I was doing right now. Okay. Now, the same thing happens in the opposite direction. If you have a double top on the daily chart and it looks like it's about to break lower, okay, that's a bearish divergence. Well, guess what? I'm going to look for a small time frame Maybe there's a channel and we're breaking out lower. That's where I want to go. So if I'm, I'm turning a five-minute time frame trade into, a, 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 into something that could span and become a daily trade. Does that make sense uh, to everybody? Ah, yes. Uh, good, 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 good. 
Okay. All right, so how do you manage your position with little risk? Oh wait, quick question. Uh, how about Biogen and AutoZone? Yes, those are also big fish size. I would have to double check the, the uh, and that's, uh, that is B I I B, that's Biogen, and AZO, that's AutoZone. Yes, those are definitely, they meet the criteria. They're big fish. They have a tendency to move. I know Bi uh, Biogen definitely does. And AutoZone, it's a seven dollars $800 stock. So that, it definitely meets the criteria. I know AutoZone has pretty good options volume also. Okay. Now, how do you manage that position with little risk? Okay. Remember, I, I told you that if you see an opportunity on the bigger time frame, let's say the daily, okay? and you get into position on a small time frame. Your job is to hold that. Don't take profits on it once it breaks and becomes profitable. If, you're, if you think that the stock is going to go up and it has the potential to run higher on the daily, don't sell, you, don't sell those calls. Hold on to them by putting on a break-even stop. You buy an option for $10, now it's worth $15. Well, move your stop loss to $10 and just let it run. Don't take your profits. I know that sometimes that, that, that gain looks pretty good, but just let it run. Remember, your entry trade's job is to do one thing. Get your foot in the door. Okay? Get your foot in the door. Have a position so that if it does run, it will take off. Okay? Be patient because I've seen uh, traders, and I've heard from traders trading big fish, sometimes it's not the first attempt. Sometimes it's not the second attempt because they'll get stopped out at break even and they'll feel a little disappointed. But you know what? Sometimes if the big fish opportunity is still there, they keep at it. Sometimes by the second or third opportunity, the, the larger move breaks out. Okay? And I'll show you examples of the larger move in just a second. I'm just trying to walk you through the process. Uh, this is a, a lot of uh, dense information, I know, but it, it's the essence of how you take advantage of an opportunity. Okay, now that you have that fish, now that you have a, a, a position, you've got your foot in the door, you, your markets are going up, you have a call on, and what do you do? Again, you want to maintain your position, Okay, you put in a no risk break even stop loss, but now it's moved from $10 to $15 to $20 in your option. Well, guess what? Now we're going to slide our stop loss up enough that we can maintain a profit cushion, but we're going to utilize a trailing stop because we're wanting to let that winner run. Okay, you always hear that. And, and I, I, I've talked to enough traders that they understand the concept of letting your winners run, but they have no clue how did you get the winner in the beginning, you know, in the first place. How did you get that to, to let it run? And this is the opportunity I'm talking about. When you have a big fish trade, you have a stock that has the ability to move X amount of dollars. Priceline on Friday moved, uh, let's see here moved, um, I believe, $45, okay? I've seen Priceline, as an example, move, uh, move $60 in a day, okay? You want to trail that, but let your winners run, okay? Now, how do you... What, how do you know when to land the big fish? When do you take your profits? You said, Dave, let it run. Okay, great. So what we're going to do... Remember, we put the trade on based on a, a five or a small, a five or fifteen minute time frame, right? Well, guess what? The longer frame was the opportunity, so we're going to use the bigger time frame as the guide when to take profits. Let's just say your plan was it was a big move, it was a double bottom, and guess what? You just caught it. It's starting to move up. Guess what? This is my SPX trade right now. Okay. And it's going to move up, and it has about $40 of room left to move. Why, why is it here? I'm using a 50% retracement. Okay? I'm using moving averages to help me decide. Maybe it's going to bump up the, on the 50-day EMA or the 8-day EMA. 
I like to use Fibonacci retracements. It's fallen basically the entire month of January, make a double bottom, and then now in the first couple of weeks in February, it's going to jump up to 50%. Okay? Maybe I'm using a daily, weekly, or monthly support and resistance levels. That's okay. And then as it's moving up, I can plan to take certain amount of profits as we go. Maybe at the 25% retracement, I'll take a little bit off. At the 38.4% retracement, I'll take a little bit off. And at the 50%, I'll take a little bit off. And then maybe I'll let some more run in case we keep going up. But that's how you land the big fish. You look at the bigger time frame, the daily. Okay, you're going to plan your exits based on these different ideas of where it may stop, how far it may go, and then I'm going to take a little bit off at each at each specific point. That's what I call partial profit targets. Okay. Um, what strike price do you buy? Usually I buy uh, in the money options either between delta 55, delta 60, delta 65, sometimes even delta 70. And if I'm looking for a move within a week, I'll usually buy options that are about three weeks out. Okay? So again, step by step, here's the big fish process. Watch big fish stocks make big potential moves. Use multiple time frames to identify both the opportunity, which is something like the daily chart, how far can it move, and an entry trade. That's how I enter. And maybe that is a 15 minute, uh, I've used five, could also be 30 minute, okay? The power of this trade is utilizing the smaller time frames to minimize risk. Which is a bigger stop loss? A five minute chart or a daily chart? Of course, it's the smaller time frame, but does it does it matter that your entry was on a small time frame if you bought a call versus you bought a call on the daily? No, it's the same. You still have the same opportunity. That's why we use different time frames. Bigger profit potential, smaller risk. Okay. Once you have profits on the line, take a look at the larger time frame. Decide on an exit strategy. Where are you going to take your money off the table? Do it to maximize profit. Always take a little bit, but always leave something to run. Okay? And uh, we have some traders that also utilize income strategies while they're waiting for these big fish stocks. That's another way we can do it. Okay? Are you concerned about data erosion with only three weeks out? Nope, because the timing of the trade, actually, most traders put on a trade and they just leave it there forever. There's a reason why when we use a big fish trade, we use two different time frames. We see the opportunity in the big time frame, but we don't enter until the small time frame starts to break and confirm that, hey, this has a chance to move in the direction of the bigger time frame. So we utilize the, the specificity of the smaller time frame to have something that's already moving in that direction. We just hope to catch it right at the beginning on the smaller time frame. Okay? Let me show you a big fish trade that resulted in about $63,000. Now, keep in mind, I'll say this up front, this is with 20 contracts. Most people are like, oh, I, I can't afford 20 contracts. Well, good. If you can afford two, you still came out with more than $6,000, okay? Let me see. There's a one question here. It says, if, uh, if this is a large account strategy, since these trades are quite expensive with high dollar stocks and multiple options, can you allow multiple exits? Well, if you think about it, we do, they are expensive because they are big dollar size stocks, right? The thing about the trades is that uh, you, first of all, limit your risk because you're using smaller time frames. But the other aspect of it is this. In order for you to, how much would you normally commit to a stock trade? If you're going to go out and buy 100 shares of a $60 stock, it's going to cost you $6,000. If you're buying two contracts in... Um, two contracts in Priceline, which usually are anywhere from 
$25 to $27, well, now you're committing $5,000. So which one is going to give you more bang for your buck? Your 100, share, 100, 100 uh, shares of your $60 stock or your two contracts in Priceline, which could easily double or even triple the, those option contracts in, in a couple of days. Can you get that kind of uh, return and that explosive return with the same amount of money? Okay. Now, I would never tell you to commit, you know, if all you have is 10000 I wouldn't say go out there and buy $6,000 of call contracts. That would be irresponsible. But I'm just saying, relatively speaking, expensive is in the eye of you know your trading account. If you want, if you want to utilize this strategy, there's nothing saying you can't use ETF options and um, uh, SPY, SPX. Well, SPY, um, QQQ, those usually run four or five hundred dollars a piece, and you still have the same kind of explosive potential. Not like in Priceline, but I mean, if you can turn um, a five thousand dollar investment into you know, 7,000 in, in two days, that's still a very good return, okay? All right, thank you very much for that opportunity. Now, this is a price line trade we took. Now, I, this, is, this is an example I bring up because it's uh, important to understand the aspect of size. Okay, this is Priceline. We're talking about when we're talking about Priceline here. It's about thirteen hundred dollars. Okay, just roughly. Now, the trade that actually occurred was this move right here in Priceline. Okay, let me show you. And the only part of it was, guess what? See this huge giant move? Yeah, I didn't trade that. <laughs> I didn't trade that move. No, me. I was extremely aggressive. Guess which move I did? This massive, tiny pullback. I'm being really silly about this because you see that? That's all I traded. Can you imagine what would happen if I traded the one going up? But anyway, so I'm, I traded the pullback. Basically what it was is Priceline was forming this basin pattern here. And I watched it because we were coming up on earnings and everything. And I'm like, okay, look at this move in price line. Sometimes I don't trade right before earnings because the options get really expensive and funny. And I'm like looking at this, my gosh, price line has moved up for eight days. Raise your hand if you think it's unnatural for a stock to make higher highs, higher lows for eight straight days. It's crazy. It, it is unnatural. You usually have pullback. Now, the green line here is the eight is the eight day EMA okay it it, it doesn't it doesn't uh, if I can write eight day EMA and so when you get pulled too far from the eight day EMA I always know that there's going to be a pullback someplace along the line okay it's like there's a gigantic rubber band so I'm trading the pullback to the eight EMA that's all now. What happened was after eight days, it's coming up, it's hitting a little bit of resistance here. So I'm starting to look for intraday trades in what direction? If we're pulling up, up, and away from the eight EMA, I'm looking for that snapback trade back to the eight. So I'm looking for bearish trades. So this is kind of a miniature big fish trade in the downward direction. So a couple of days here, basically what happened was. I caught it on, I believe this was a Tuesday, okay, around lunch. We were at the high of the day. I was watching on a five-minute chart, and I got a head and shoulders pattern. So I'm just, in a way, scalp trading it on a five-minute time frame. I buy some puts, and it forms this really ominous bearish pattern. It's a descending wedge, and every single time it goes up, the momentum profile of this thing is just kind of going straight down. So I end up over the course of 20 minutes accumulating 20 put contracts, okay, 20. And over the next three days, it goes straight back down and I exit at the same price. I exit Thursday around 11 o'clock in the morning, okay. 
after a $55 move. Okay, that $55 move with a Delta 70 option uh, and 20 contracts yielded roughly $63,000. Okay, am I playing counter trend? Which trend are you talking about, Clint? Are you talking about the daily trend or the day hourly trend or the six or the 30 minute trend or the 15 minute trend? Because if you look at this chart, on an hourly trend, the trend is down. Okay, you have to you have to do that. But I understand what you're talking about because the big fish trade should be to the upside. But the reason why I wasn't trading it to the upside, remember I said this is earnings. This is Thursday earnings, by the way. They reported that night, and you can see we gap up almost forty dollars. That's okay. But the point is the opportunity was there and I took it. The aspect of this trade that I want to show you deals with the size. The opportunity is there. Okay? Let's talk about another big fish trade. This one's pretty straightforward. Okay, we have a head and shoulders pattern here. Actually, there's three of them. And I catch at the top of this bar, I catch a one, two, three, move down to the 50-day EMA. I don't know why my EMA is not on this chart. I apologize um, because there's a 50 running through here and it, and it comes down and with, that's where we come down to. Again, it's a, it's, a, um, it's a trade that I take partial profits on and then I get stopped out because it turns around and it jumps back up on, on the last little bit because the majority of the trade came off at the 50. Okay, now that was a, it went from 605 to 586, and that's a $14 move. My profit here was nearly at 11,000. Again, this is GOOGL alphabet, and uh, again, $23,000. Now again, this is 20 contracts. Not everybody can do 20 contracts, but if you do, say, two, you still made $1,100 in the course of uh, it's one, two, three, three and a half trading days. Okay, it, it's the essence of it. Where else can you take a trade? Okay, you're buying, you're buying basically about a twelve dollar option. Okay, anywhere from twelve to fifteen, and on a fourteen dollar move, this thing gains about ten dollars. So it goes from twelve to about say say twenty two. Okay. Where else can you turn $12 into $22 over the course of three days? Okay. All right. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run out of time. I want to get to what's in the market now. So, this is another example. Um, this particular one brought in, it's, this, it's almost the same trade, 11000 Again, 20 contracts. It's it's also still Google. I know I had a I had a secondary trade. All right, and here's an example of a big fish trade that got away. All right, because this is in Priceline. It failed. Okay, we were actually watching this 1190 level. Price had gone up, came down, and then it hit the support level. This 1190 level was a monthly low from back here. Okay, it's a monthly low, and we actually bounced off of it uh, a couple of times. So we hit it and we bounced. Now the thing about this trade was I'm looking for this thing to drop all the way down to 11.35, and this was a 50% retracement from this move down here. Okay, and it moved all the way up, I'm looking for a 50% retracement down to 11. 35. We're sitting here at 1190. That's a $55 move in price line. So what happened? Over the next three days, I take trade, and it was kind of weird how it happened. Every day about one o'clock, we reach nearly the high. Okay, and then we manage to fall, test 1190 and bounce. Well, what happened was almost every day I took a couple of positions to 
to test that 1190, each time we broke higher and I got stopped out. I got stopped out each time making a little bit of profit each time, waiting for this massive move. Guess what? That massive move never occurred. Okay? Here, uh, first day I made roughly 11000 on 10 contracts. It went from high to low about $20. Again, I'm just utilizing a small time frame and I'm holding on and then I get stopped out. That's what I mean. Don't get frustrated when it hits that level and you, you're looking for that really big break and really big move. It doesn't happen, but we make a little bit of money. Okay? This next day, 10 contracts made about uh, 9,600. Didn't break through. The next day, 10 contracts made 6,000. Cannot break through. And then the day that actually follows, I, I was seeing if it had, we, uh, we actually bounced, closed here at the high, and, and then you can see we just continue higher. It did not repeat. I guess three times was the charm. One, two, three, 1,900 uh, held. But if you add all that up, we're well over $25,000. Okay, again, you break that down per contract, that's 2000, uh, over $2,500 over three days on a trade that did not work. Okay? So there's opportunity. Well, what triggers uh, the entry point? Thank you for the question, Stan. Stan's asking, how did I, how did I get into this? Well, remember what I'm learning? Got a little bit of bottom. It was the weirdest thing. But, again, that trade failed. Now let me keep going because the shark bite trade, let me give you a synopsis of it here in the next three minutes and then I want to, to show you the opportunities there in the water, okay? All right. So I, I wanted to focus on the trade itself because that actually you can understand a little bit of how this works, all right? So which part of a big fish move has the biggest probability of success? Okay, which is going to move the fastest with the highest probability? Okay, what's good? Okay, this is what I mean. This is fast. This is likely. What happens? It is at the breakout here. If we're playing a double bottom, there's one bottom, two bottoms. If the breakout is here at the neckline, and we're thinking it's going to go up, and we're saying that okay, from this high to this low, this is my target. This is 50%. Okay, I do this trade in my trading all the time. This double bottom reversal. This is the big fish trade to the upside from 1160 up to a, almost a, a 1150. I'm sorry, 1060 to 1150. Which part is the fastest? Okay. Oops. It's the first half of the move. If I think the stock's going to go up eighty dollars, well, my goodness, the first fifty. The if I think the first, if the move overall is going to move eighty, okay, the first half is forty dollars. It's the fastest, and it's it's the it's the highest probability. When you break out in, in a big fish move, it does not usually stall. It accelerates. It goes fast. Okay. The good example is if you look at the SPX Friday, once it broke out above the channel, it accelerated. And I'll talk about that in a second. It accelerated and it's moving now. $40 move. Okay, That's where you do the shark bite trade. Okay, The shark bite trade uses, uses options as a debit spread and your targets are based on the first half of the move. If I think if, if I think it's going to go 80, I put my target $40 away. Okay? Very straightforward. Now, I go into greater detail in my workshop, but the essence of it is this. When you're looking at a, a chart and you see that, wow, this thing has a chance to go down to this support level on a breakout or retrace $80, well, look to take advantage of the first 40 that's where the money is. It's fast. That's why it pays to be able to, to get in early. See here? It goes from 1160 to 11, uh, 1060 to 1100. That's the first 50%. Usually, if this move takes three days, the first 50% takes one day. The second, the second uh, 50% takes 
twice as long. Okay, usually it's a two to one ratio. All right. Okay, these this, these are the essence of the shark bite trade. I'm not gonna to read that off to you, but I want you to remember in the when you're getting a move and you're breaking out, the first the first fifty percent is what you need to focus on. That's their most profitable. So if you're gonna look to make the most money, make the most money or or have the biggest position in the first fifty percent. Okay? Yes, Clint says a lot of times on a move like that, especially if it's a counter trend move, it's short covering that really juices up that trade. Okay. Also, if it's a breakout, if it's a sideways channel and you're waiting for a breakout and all of a sudden, boom, it takes off, well, guess what? Everybody and their brother is waiting for this breakout. So the first 50%, let's say it's going down to the support level, the first 50% is fast. And the nice thing is with options, they respond very quickly. They, they kind of jump. All right. Here's that same Priceline Big Fish move I just showed you. Here's the opportunity going $85. The first 50% is what you want to watch. Oh, I did take that trade. I traded between 10 and 20 contracts, mostly 10. That overall move was $76,000. Again, you only have one contract to your name. That's fine. Seven thousand is not bad for for that kind of move. And that move occurred probably within a week, week and a half. That's what I call a big fish trade. Okay? This is not small peanuts type trades. Again, they don't come around that often. If you get three or four, five maybe in the first part of the year, three, four, five at the last part of the year, that's still a pretty good, pretty good deal. Now, if you do the shark bite trade like, uh, and you'll 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 get to see that later on in the workshop, you can add on with that strategy, the shark bite strategy, an additional thirteen thousand, and it's actually a very conservative way to do it. It just you have to have the timing right, and because you have the big fish strategy, timing is pretty easy. All right, so this is the big fish trading system. It is designed to help you catch massive explosive moves. It will help you get in trades early with little risk because you're using the small time frame. Okay, that's the trigger. Anybody can say, look, the daily chart, there's a big move going to happen. Well, how do you get in? How do you know how to minimize your risk? Okay, there's nothing like uh, a $15 stop loss to make your day really, really tough. But instead of $15, maybe you have a $1 stop loss. That's much easier to manage. Okay, I talk about the trading plan and exit strategy designed to maximize profit. Okay, and I also also throw in an income generation strategy too. But most importantly, take a look at that shark bite. I have a trader. A really quick story. He's a really good trader with Apple. Uh, he's been in my trading room going on three years. He took my shark bite strategy. And he knocks the cover off the ball in Apple every single time. It it has a when you see it Apple move say five to five percent over the course of a week, he's knocking the cover off the ball. He he just has an innate sense when something like that moves, and he uses the same strategy. All right, so here's the opportunity for you about the, sh the, the big fish strategy. I'm going to put it in the chat box right here. It's valuecharts.com slash big. Now, this shark bite strategy, it's the complete on-demand course, and, uh, and, and it's the big fish, I'm sorry, the complete uh, big fish strategy video as well as the shark bite breakout trade. The on-demand video is currently value priced for this Metastock event for $297. You just type in valuecharts.com slash B-I-G and uh, it is, you'll be able to sign up for it right there. That's our special price. Normally this is a $500 plus trading system, giving it to you for $297. Now in the chat box, I've, I've uh, put it in there. All you have to do is click on it. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Again, you have opportunities for trades like this. You know, 
$2,700 per contract. Okay, $2,300 per contract. Okay, if you want to trade more, that's the nice thing, Joe. Joe's asking, what if I want to trade more than 10 contracts? The thing is, you're only limited to um, how much you want to risk. Now, I'm not telling you to bet the farm, but you could buy a farm with some of these profits. Let me just tell you that much. I, I have traders that I have to caution, and, but they understand their risk and they take advantage of them. Uh, opportunities. It's almost like you teach, teach a man how to fish. If they go out there and they have a massive, massive haul, all I can do is applaud them, you know? So again, this is the new shark. Uh, this is the big fish breakout complete strategy for two hundred ninety-seven dollars. Okay, and it goes to ValueCharts.com/big. Now, give me a quick second. I'm going to tell you what's in the water now. Okay. I actually have a, a couple of traders there. They're saying they're, they're making big fish trades. Oh, oh, almost out of time. Thank you. Okay, really quick, okay, because you guys stayed around and you went through that, that outage with us. Right now, take a look at the S&P 500. There's a double top on the monthly chart. Now, if I don't know, if, if, that's a 500-point move down in uh, to 1,400 in the next six to eight months. Okay, there's going to be a ton of big fish trading opportunities there. Right now on the daily, Facebook, Amazon, Google are, are getting ready to make a retracement bounce back up to 50%. Those are opportunities you can get with the big fish strategy at valuecharts.com slash big. Okay? And uh, Priceline, by the way, is making a swing trade back up to the 50%. There's a $120 opportunity move right there. Shark Bite is a $60 move. Okay? Take advantage of that. Take advantage of that. One trade with one contract can easily well cover the $297 cost. So get the, get the workshop so you can learn how to take advantage of it and maximize your profits and minimize your risk. Valuecharts.com slash big. So thanks, guys. All right. Thank right, you. Any questions? Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and uh, kind okay, of get back. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Dave. Really appreciate it. Uh, good job, too, by the way. Let me see here. Let's change this over. Okay. Awesome. A lot of uh, very good. Very good. Thanks for coming in, Dave. So, good job. Appreciate your uh, coming in, talking to us, spending a oh, little bit of your time today. And the, <laughs> the link for that, again, is... Um, uh, what was it? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, sorry. It's uh, valuecharts.com slash yes, gotcha. sir. Okay, very cool. Good All right. you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're hanging in there. Um, again, let's go ahead and throw some props to the sponsors today, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities. Uh, what a great magazine. Again, if you buy anything uh, from Metastock today, they're going over $200 anyway. They're going to give you a couple years for free, two years free as part of the subscription. I want to thank them for sponsoring the event. I want to thank all of the great speakers. I want to thank everybody that's still in the room and everybody that's come today. Uh, it's uh, So far, it's been going really well in my opinion.